Tyler, what's been your experience looking for an agent or manager? I know you came from New York, from the modeling world, and you did acting as a child as well. What's your process like looking for an agent or manager? Uh, <clears throat> well, I would say that uh, one thing that a lot of people, I think, forget when they're soliciting representation is that it's as much an interview for you as it is an interview for them. Um, and it, it really is not a question of who you're working with or the size of the agency. I think it really has to do with the passion that your, your representative has for you. And, uh, and as such, I think a lot of times as actors we go into these meetings um, looking for a certain outcome and just all too eager to sign on the dotted line when we hear the things that we want to hear. When in reality, um, you know, there are a lot of hard questions that you have to ask uh, in reverse. And that's sometimes hard to do as an actor because you know, there's a lot of insecurity in this business. I mean, the one thing that I've always been reminded of, um, and my mom does, it, does so lovingly, but also to uh, make sure I stay responsible, but is that the second you finish the, your last job, you're unemployed. So, uh, and that's the nature of this, of this job. So sometimes when you're going for these meetings and whatnot, you feel like you're, in a, like you're back on your heels as opposed to you know, where you should be, which is firm and centered. And, uh, and how can we work together to achieve uh, a mutually desired result and outcome. So, so for me, that means I have some questions when I go in there too. Um, but I've been lucky enough, especially recently, um, just to come across a, a great team, a fantastic team, uh, who I really believe in, and it's uh, and it's very, and we're very new to one another. So uh, I'm very excited for the future. Yeah. I know I've talked to other actors and they've said that, you know, they felt that their, their agent or manager wasn't giving them the attention that they need and they understood because they had, quote, bigger clients to deal with. But if, if an actor's feeling that, like maybe phone calls aren't returned and mm -hmm. things, you know, like at what point do they say either I'm being too demanding or no, these are red flags and I need to move on? I mean, that, that is also a great question. Um, that's tough to say. Because I think that there are two sides. There are two sides to that. Um, on one side, I think a lot of times actors uh, rely too heavily on their managers. They they lean on them and their agents representation, and they become their the representation becomes a sort of scapegoat for um, for the for the success that, that maybe they're not having at the moment. Um, when I feel like a lot of rather than turn it externally, I feel like a lot of the work should be turned internally and you have to, you have to really ask yourself, have I done everything that I could possibly do? Uh, for me, I noticed, uh, just to get into the specifics, I noticed that for years and years um, as an actor, I, I really wasn't aware of the materials that were being pitched on my behalf. Things like Actors Access, LA Casting, those sorts of, those sorts of um, different houses. and. Um, and it wasn't until recently that I really started checking the materials to make sure they were up to date. And right. lo and behold, here, here do I find, here are the relics of all these old agents that I've been with. And, and here's, uh, you know, misattributed credits or missing credits or all these kinds of things. So, um, you know, for, for me, I think before you go blaming uh, others, just like in life, you've got to ask yourself, have I done everything? And, and for me, that really comes down to not just 90%, not just 95%. Not even 99%, but am I doing 100% of what I could possibly do to help my case? And then at that point, then I turn the blame to the to representation, and then you make decisions from there. But uh, fortunately, it hasn't gotten to that.